and you know get 50 cents off. Um, they're just advertising. And I, I've heard this forever in advertising from clients. I have no idea if that ad is doing anything for me at all. And so QR codes, when used well, meaning that attention is called in the QR code in the ad, um, the QR code is visually compelling, which is something that work, we work on, uh, whether it's iconographic or it's, uh, um, or it's you know, uh, branded. And then um, the endpoint, which is also critical for QR codes, having a QR code, and I've seen this, go to the exact photograph of an ad or ad image that you're already looking at in a magazine, that's bad. Um, having it go to your splash page or your landing page or your website, which is not mobile friendly to begin with, very bad. Um, but where it comes to be good is when you do pay attention to that code, instead of just kind of putting it down at the bottom of the ad as kind of a forgotten kind of thing, like, hey, somebody said we need to have QR codes, let's stick it there. But you actually do something with that QR code to make people scan it. And when they do scan it, it's not just like a free code, but it's an actual enhanced code that provides you with analytics. The kind of analytics we can provide are pretty amazing. Um, we can provide demographic information. We can pro because people opt into demographic surveys when they download QR code readers, especially the scan line form. Um, we can also match uh, carrier demographics, meaning that if someone scans a QR code, I can tell you when, you know, like we just did one with Les Schwab, and they sent it out to 250,000 houses in Idaho, in Nampa and Boise. And we did a really cool QR code, and we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scans from that, which was a surprise, first of all. And secondly, what we found was that the iPhone was like one of the lowest percentage devices used to scan that QR code. But here in the Portland metro market or in other urban markets, we see the iPhone often is 70% of the all scans are coming from iPhones, and then Droid is right behind that, and then there's like maybe a little bit of Blackberry and some other stuff. And in this case, and this is really fresh, this just happened at the beginning of the month, um, we saw over 44 different devices were used to scan these QR codes on this mailer that went to these residences. And of those 44 devices, um, the Droid was by far the highest, about 60%, and the iPhone actually only came in about 30%. So that kind of tells you something about the demographics. And then if you take uh, Nielsen demographics and you pair those with, you know, uh, uh, you know, phone model sales, you really can find out a lot. Lastly, we have geolocation capabilities as well. I mean, um, we always can see what state and what county that code was scanned in, but about 30% of the time, and this will increase over time as more and more people enable their devices geolocation capability, we actually can see the physical building where that code was scanned. Um, and so that's pretty powerful. Thanks, Jeff. That was very helpful. So the next question is for Keo. So one of the key, uh, a lot of the uh, examples you mentioned in the application places like location is the heart of the app in many ways, right? Where you discover where you are and the notification and so on. So how do you handle the concern people may have on privacy front? Because here you have one app which has a lot of, so any insights you can share with the audience? Um, we don't really think about that. <laughs> no, I actually, it, with with what we do, um, it's it, it's um, it's very uh, it's very opt in, I guess. Um, people people uh, download the app because we tell them why. We basically tell them why they're gonna why they're downloading the app and what they're gonna get out of it. Um, and it's it's basically you know there's there's no you know we're not doing anything weird. You know it's 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 very transparent. Um, I think, um, I think, I, yeah. People people are very concerned um, about about location tracking and stuff like that, and and um, we have we have the technology to do that, and we do we do do that um, in some instances. Um, I think I think what's interesting is I think it's kind of like um, I think it's like anything else. Like it, it's people just I, it's almost like they don't realize that 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 this stuff has been around forever. You know, I mean, like like you were saying, you, you scan a QR code, and you're like you're giving you know demographic information, <laughs> the location, like all this stuff, which 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 um, which is just part of the it's just part of the deal. Um, 
and it's it's not even. I mean, it's just it's just it's just been like that forever. Um, but with what we're doing specifically, um, we're trying to be very transparent. You know, it's like you 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 launch this app, you can search for a book, and it'll take you that book. You know, and that's pretty much all we're doing. Maybe some of the information you have when the people use the app, you make sure that you don't uh, retain any of it, right? It has to be completely get flushed out because... Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we keep, we keep information that's very um, like aggregate, basically, um, or, or anonymized, right? So we, have, we know that this phone, we know, we know what this phone does, basically, but we have no idea who the person is, whose phone that is. Sure. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what everybody does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So the uh, next.